I'm one year in on the Link Station N1, which is a all flash unit. You might notice that I've got some USB drives attached to it, but build as an all flash unit that I got about November last year and had a video out on. And I wanted to give a follow-up that kind of incorporates some of what I've seen over the past year and some of the things that I think are really strong about this unit, some of the things that could use a little bit more improvement in it. And of course, I'm gonna talk about things like what the power consumption looks like and some of the accessories, unlikely accessories even at that, that you might consider if you are looking at a Link Station N1 and why you might be looking at those. So the Link Station N1 is cool for a couple of reasons. It's got four M.2 slots on the bottom of it. And you can go back, watch the video that I did the full setup guide on if you're looking for that kind of detail. I'll just mention them because it's pretty self-explanatory how to use them. However, what you might not be thinking is that those M.2 slots can actually be used for other M.2 cards that are not just NVMe. So right here, I've got a Google Coral TPU. This is going to work in Frigate with my home NVR system and give me object detection, notification, and really cool capabilities. In real time, that's pretty awesome to be able to add into a really, really small form factor little micro PC like this. Now, I would say that if you're looking at the uptime and reliability on this, I have not had any issues with it rebooting randomly or crashing or anything like that. So, it has been used a lot. It's been on a lot. And I think right now it's at one month and six days uptime. We'll check that here in just a second. Yep, looks like it's at about one month and six days uptime. So that's pretty cool. Really quickly, I'll just go over my storage arrangement that I've got here. I've got two two terabyte Samsung Evo 870 drives. Those are uh, running in a mirror setup. So I have redundancy that I have redundancy on all of this stuff. I use this for my own personal mini NAS server photos. It's got our videos, it's got recipes, it's got some apps, all sorts of really cool things. And it does have a 2.5 gigabit network connection. Now let's take a look at what that's connected to. That's connected to this little tiny, really efficient, and it's been very performant 2.5 gigabit network switch. And I like this network switch because it's got 10G ports on it that would allow you to connect either a 10 gigabit dedicated card with SFP plus connections to it, or it would allow you to route it over to another switch and have really good uplinks. The 2.5 gigabit nature of this particular unit is its biggest weak point. In my opinion, that's a pretty big weak point also, especially if you're looking at putting four M.2s in it. You're gonna have so much invested in performance that really not being able to hit the 10G speeds that you should be able to hit kind of is a bummer. Now, granted, 2.5 gigabit is there for a reason. That's because most existing infrastructure that's already cabled and ran in your walls is going to be fine with that. You can check out some of the crazy networking videos and see me in the attic and stuff like that if you want to see what that might be like, but might not be for everybody. And this unit also, with that 16 gigabytes of RAM that it comes with, does actually run pretty good. It does only have four cores, but it does have a relatively modernish iGPU so that you can do things like transcoding by passing that through to them. Definitely though, the M.2 card like capabilities of this are, it's like giving yourself an extra PCIe lane or two. And I don't really need to have that much storage on the cache. It's great to have everything max out when it's coming in, but the mover moves it to one of these drives over here. This is running as my array. That's five terabytes of storage space that I've got basically on that array. Then I've got two terabytes, which is basically for running apps and containers and all the plugins and stuff like that that I need. And then underneath there, the M.2s, those are just my cache drives. And so things get moved off of the cache and onto one of the others automatically by Unraid. Some things you need to keep really fast access to. So some of those I just leave on the two, two terabyte Evo 870s running as a mirror. That actually has worked out really good. So it's not a huge amount of storage I've got on this server, but it is actually a lot of capacity. It is very, very low energy usage. And with an uptime of about one month and six days, I mean, this thing has been running very consistently in the interior. I just wanted to bring it out here so that I could actually hook it up to the 2.5 gigabit because I don't have 2.5 gigabit 
ran all the way inside the house. There's a whole thing there. Like I've actually used 100% of the network ports that I've got on the switches inside the house. So ah, there's networking upgrades that are gonna happen for sure. So overall, I really do like the Link Station N1. I think it's a really decent uh, piece of hardware. It does have one shortfall that I gotta mention, and that is having a 2.5 gigabit NIC instead of a 10 gigabit NIC is not good. They really should have addressed this, and I think if they did a little bit better outreach or surveying of the community, they would have known this. However, I will balance that by saying, for the most part, if you're just using SSDs or lower performance, cheaper NVMEs, maybe it doesn't matter that much. I mean, if you're using really high performance NVMe drives, yeah, you, you gotta be thinking to yourself, I'm leaving performance on the table. But for the SSDs, you're not really. Those are gonna kind of max out if you're running them in a mirror setup like I'm running them, maybe at around 500 megabytes a second. So that's pretty close to what you're gonna be able to push over your 2.5. So it is leaving a little bit there on the table, but it's not a tremendous amount. And certainly for things that are slower, like rotational disks, that's a very, very slow uh, spindle speed that you've got on these. So it is not very fast. I think they can hit about 115 megabytes per second. And I leave all my photos on the SSD drives here. And actually they load really quick whenever I'm pulling them up in Memories, which is an extension that I use for NextCloud. It running and coming with Unraid is a huge benefit because it's very easy to set up and configure and install Docker apps, which can get a little bit complicated for people. The Docker interface that is out there for a lot of other things, uh, not yet necessarily user friendly, but definitely Unraid, in my opinion, has done a very good job of implementing Docker for their app store and it brings tremendous capabilities to you. So for us, like we have our photos served up through it, we have Nextcloud served up through it for our own personal stuff. We have movies, photos that we've taken over time uh, stored there that we can actually review on our TVs, queue them up, play them through our media players, all hosted by this little thing. And it really doesn't consume very many watts at all. With the two drives here at most states, when it's kind of idling, it's about eight watts. Now, if I'm doing some pretty heavy you know, tasks on it, maybe running a parity check, and at the same time, reading a bunch of information off the 2.5 drives, then you could see it go up to about 17 to 18 watts. I really think this is an impressive unit from a power consumption standpoint. So overall, I think this is a really cool device and I would consider it pretty strongly. I think that there is a lot of capabilities that it has that are pretty good. And I look forward to whatever they come out with next. So one year in, this one actually does really good. Make sure you hit like and subscribe because I've got some more small form factor things that I'm gonna be doing a one year update review on. I've got the Zima boards. Of course, they sent me all these Zima boards. I found crazy uses for those Zima boards and most of the things have been going really good, but there are a couple things that you definitely, if you are a small board compute, kind of low power compute aficionado, gonna wanna make sure you check out in that video. Everybody, I will check you out next time. Have a great rest of your day.